We now take you to the broadcast of It's Time with Reverend Nathaniel W. Martin. Here is Reverend Martin. Thank you, Dr. Blackwell. Uh, let me say Hotep Habaragani to my Africana Studies colleagues and contemporaries and researchers after the truth. And let me say good morning, good afternoon, but certainly never good evening and never uh, goodbye because I've always found goodbyes traumatic. I said I have always found goodbyes traumatic. That's a personal thing. And uh, we thank you for looking in our way and this uh, offering that we are giving, doing right now is a social justice uh, offering and it is social justice because we know that we cannot uh, serve God without serving our fellow man which involves us in the social justice arena. Uh, they say you can't, can't treat everybody the same but you can certainly treat them right and that is one of the things that uh, in our culture, in our society, and in our civilization, we seem to have a lot of trouble with. Uh, Proverbs tells us that uh, righteousness exalted the nation. It's Proverbs 14 and 34. But it says sin is a reproach to any people. And truly, we are in a, we are witnessing rather, the fulfillment of the word of God in our times and uh, we see the the uh, difference in the treatment of the refugees from Ukraine and the treatment for the refugees from Sudan well the Ukrainians are called refugees but the Sudanese are just immigrants <laughs> just, just like the Haitians and so uh, it seems to be that there is a double standard uh, being employed, whereas we are supplying uh, Ukraine with what will soon be trillions of dollars worth of military equipment in order for them to uh, fight for their homeland. But we are not uh, likewise doing anything approaching that in Sudan's fight for its existence and uh, if you look at the ongoing war in Yemen which I think this is about the fifth year of that war in Yemen no uh, relief in sight uh, we seem to have uh, a double a different viewpoint let's put it that way uh, to the uh, darker hued people who are struggling for their uh, rights and their land and their freedom as opposed to how we are responding in Ukraine. All right. Uh, reason brought that up because in Chicago there is an uproar and a controversy being raised because uh, the housing advocates and the social justice advocates in uh, Chicago have been pleading for funds for years uh, to fund social uh, programs right there in Chicago. You remember, Chicago was a red line state. What do you mean by red line? Uh, it was that there were restrictive covenants drawn up that... Uh, well, they were really racially restrictive covenant, which is a total word. Uh, and that was the origin of the Homeowners Association, uh, which is still in existence and prevalent. But the original reason, purpose for the homeowners existence was to make sure that uh, colors or Negroes, as we were known then, uh, would not uh, get a chance to buy housing in good areas. Uh, People always wonder why the housing conditions are as they are, because as goes the housing, so goes the schooling, so goes the education, uh, so goes the shopping, and uh, many of the things that uh, we take for granted are a result 
of decisions made uh, a generation ago, a hundred years ago now, uh, that are having lasting effects even now. Uh, we were Negroes or colors. I use the two words interchangeably because that was what uh, was used at that, the terms that were used at that time. Remember, we didn't develop this uh, black consciousness, black pride, until into the 60s, the 1960s. Thank you. And so uh, the fact that uh, people were prevented or hindered or from uh, buying where they could afford simply on basis of how they looked is something that we as a people um, must take a look at. Uh, you always hear Governor DeSantis in, in uh, Florida saying that uh, we don't want to uh, shame or embarrass, we being white folks, I don't want to embarrass or shame any of our people uh, by uh, teaching uh, black history. So we're just not going to teach black history at all in, Flor in the, in the uh, Florida school system. And uh, one of the reasons, of course, is because of the <laughs> racially restrictive covenants. And what the racial, racially restrictive covenants did was that it was an agreement between parties that says uh, only white people at this time would be allowed to buy uh, in a, a community. And so any other people that tried to buy would be uh, blocked out or prevented. And they put it, and that's where the covenants were drawn up. The covenant stated uh, very blatantly, uh, very obviously on his face. It was very, not very, not subtle. Uh, it just said that when this property is sold, uh, this covenant will go along with the property. And this property must be sold to only other uh, white tenants, no Negroes, <laughs> and uh, no other uh, types of people need apply. And so this is what was occurring in Chicago, going back to my original point. Uh, and as a result, uh, now, here in 2023, the uh, people are clamoring for uh, help, because those uh, tenements and those projects are still up there and that uh, those uh, communities that were squeezed in and boxed in are, you know, are now in uh, their latter generations. And uh, people wonder, so why is that uh, neighborhood or community so bad? Well, it's because the people were boxed in from the Jump Street uh, by as we said, uh, intentionally, intentional racism, which is called what it is, uh, racially restrictive covenants. If you can't buy uh, in the suburbs, then you're going to be uh, only able to buy where I say you can buy. And so that's where the uh, projects and all of those type of, of uh, things were uh, invented and uh, uh, black people would squeeze well, I'm, I'm using the word black, uh, but the the uh, Negro and colored community was squeezed in to uh, these little small uh, areas, and you had to, uh, you know, and things would would were doubled up on. Uh, people would uh, multiply because people were steady coming from the south and coming from other places. Uh, across the United States for a better life, better opportunity in Chicago, Illinois. So they thought. Uh, but uh, to today, the uh, city council or the city fathers in Chicago have found $51 million to uh, house immigrants. You can't make this stuff up, folks, to house immigrants. So, uh, but you, you, you couldn't find money for the people, the citizens that live there and pay the taxes and all of that, but they can find $51 million for immigrants. 
well, migrants who did not pay taxes here <clears throat> and uh, who were in many cases bust up from Texas and Florida by the uh, radical right that is in charge down there. And, and so uh, Chicago has found this $51 million, found this $51 million to help uh, the immigrants get set up. That means they get Social Security, they get housing, and, uh, they get uh, food stamps, they get education for their children, they get health care, which is, uh, that's the whole ball game. And a lot of the people that that are in Chicago, that are taxpayers in Chicago, have been to Chicago for generations, uh, have been deprived of just those types of uh, benefits and helps, but yet they are readily available to migrants who have not paid uh, into the uh, tax base or the tax system there in the city of Chicago, and some of them are waiting uh, for their asylum uh, petitions to be adjudicated, which could take up to two uh, years or ten years, and uh, and you can get you can extrapolate from there uh, how how unjust that looks and how unfair it sounds that the citizen of the nation cannot get help, but the people who are not citizens can simply uh, railroad through and go to the front of the line. Uh, I'm sure you remember that when the Ukrainian refugees, they were called refugees, these other folks are called immigrants. Uh, if they're from Haiti, they're immigrants. If they're from Mexico, they're immigrants. Uh, if they're from Nicaragua, uh, they're immigrants. You know, Central America, they're immigrants. But if you're from Ukraine, you automatically get refugee status. Uh, reminiscent of the uh, who is a an American uh, question, which still goes around, and uh, people from uh, Europe will automatically. Uh, America, just based upon their skin color. People from Russia, automatically <laughs> American and white, based upon their uh, skin color. So these things uh, are come to bear, come to mind. Uh, people are looking and observing and reminiscing and reflecting and contrasting and comparing. And quite frankly, the comparison doesn't make us look at us as a people as a nation, I should say, uh, look that well. Remember last week we were talking about reparations for from slavery, which is still not paid. Uh, that reckoning has still not uh, been uh, accounted for. And uh, we did get some, some traction here in the state of California. Uh, but you can just imagine when that question is put to so-called refugees or immigrants, they're going to turn thumbs down on that because why? They don't want to get anything taken out of their piece of the pie to help a people who were uh, forcefully brought over here uh, hundreds of years ago that built this country and uh, the country never paid for them and the slavery was legal. It was in the Constitution. And uh, if you've heard Mitch McConnell or uh, that ilk up there in Washington, you know it's going to be a hard slog to get anything like a reparations bill passed in the uh, Congress of the United States. Uh, indeed, right now, well nigh, well nigh impossible uh, with the radicals looking with the likes of uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Kevin McCarthy, uh, Matt Gates. And uh, all of those reactionaries that uh, supported the January 6, uh, 2020 insurrection and, and were doing their best to overthrow the election in the uh, House of Representatives, uh, and that includes Ted Cruz, as he comes to my mind. Uh, all of these reactionaries are not about to 
uh, vote for any funds for reparations for people that live here. And so the beat goes on. And uh, we must be about our father's business. We must point this out, and as, as I'm doing right now, uh, we, we must point out the injustice, the uh, inequity, the inequality, and the basic downright unfairness. Uh, someone's going to always say, well, who said life was fair? All right, life is not fair. All right, but what about the injustice part of it? What about the equality, uh, the equity? Uh, what about those uh, demands? Are those not uh, legal demands, ethical demands? And uh, when are we going to start uh, helping our own people? I applaud uh, Mayor Karen Bass here in the city of Los Angeles, who is hoping to uh, house 17,000 uh, homeless people uh, within <clears throat> this year. Well. I guess within the first her first term, although she has done splendid compared to uh, the uh, mayors that have been in uh, before her, because she saw it as a, a national emergency and she treated it as a national emergency, and she's been able to garner funds. And I think right now she has a hold on 250 million, hopefully. Uh, that can be used to uh, house the homeless. Keeping in mind that the real estate market in uh, Los Angeles is high, and it costs it could cost over seventy thousand dollars to build one apartment unit to house one homeless person, with the way things are going. So if she got two hundred and fifty million, she doesn't have nearly enough. Uh, if, if, if there is 42,000 people sleeping on our streets every night. And you can do the math in your own mind. And uh, these real estate brokers or agents and uh, salespeople are, are, are salivating at the mouth to get that good government money uh, for the, 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 uh, the homeless. And you, you can't, uh, like I said, they got them boxed. They're boxing the uh, city in because they know that the city needs that property. The city needs uh, that those units, and they're playing hardball, and uh, they're trying to get the most money that they can. If it costs uh, seventy thousand dollars and up for one little apartment unit, you can imagine uh, the price tag before this homeless situation in Los Angeles is uh, finally uh, remedied. But we we hope that uh, Mayor Karen Bass well, and we hope that she will persevere and stick to her gun. And we hope that she can do <clears throat> the first 17,000 uh, in her first term. You know, everybody's watching her now. Uh, they're gonna watch how that money is spent. They're going to go back and uh, perform audits and uh, look at the books and see uh, where every dollar went because there's it's really uh, nothing but suspicion that attaches uh, to the homeless in our culture. Uh, remember, uh, the homeless uh, are not, uh, have no status, no uh, prestige, and they don't, you know, a lot of times they smell bad, they look bad, and they are bad, they're down and outers. And uh, those of us who are doing what we think is somewhat better, we tend to uh, look askance at those that are not doing as well as we are, the, as the unfortunate, as we call them. All right, uh, and so uh, the homeless crisis is, is a, uh, menace all across this nation because if you don't have nowhere to stay, you don't have nowhere for your mail to come, and you don't have nowhere to, you know, to go in private where you can have a respite from the day when you don't have a, a, a no place, not an apartment, uh, not a house. My God, you know. And so uh, 
this is a, a, a reality in our culture that is long overdue to be addressed. And uh, quite frankly, I don't see how we're going to uh, house all of the immigrants and all of the refugees and all of the homeless who are out there before the refugees came, mind you, and uh, still uh, uh, do our, our due diligence with our debt ceilings and all of that, uh, it begins to be a bit much. All right, moving on for a minute. Uh, I would also like to note that Supreme Court of the United States will soon be hearing a case that will challenge the constitutionality of Social Security. Well, Social Security was uh, started way back in 1935 with Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was one of the most progressive uh, presidents on record. And uh, it was a very, it, it, it's the most successful government program that the United States of America has ever started. And it has been in the crosshairs of the conservative uh, people ever since it was uh, ratified and began to pay off uh, people in their old age so that grandma and grandpa would not be sitting out on the street corner in their old age when they can't work and can't do for themselves. No, at least they'll have some money uh, coming in every month. And that's all Social Security is. It's not a lifeline. It's just something that you get every month if you have paid into it. And that is the rub, my brothers and my sisters. All of us have paid, uh, that have worked on a job, have paid into Social Security. And yet, uh, the denizens in Washington, D.C., do not want us to have that Social Security money that we pay into uh, without a fight. They bring up all manner of uh, oppositions, all manner of protests, all manner of red tape and bureaucratic nightmares in order for you to get your Social Security. And God knows Social Security, the maximum I think you can get is $3,000. And uh, you try to do $3,000 in this culture and see how far that money will go. Uh, especially if you got to pay rent and that rent is $2,000 or $2,500 a month. And if you, only, if you are getting the max of uh, $3,000 from Social Security, that means you only have what? $500 to $1,000 to live on. And that's just for your... your uh, your rent. And so you can readily see the conundrum or the problem that people on in their old age have uh, if they haven't paid for their homes, if they haven't bought a home, uh, if they're still living uh, in their own apartment and want to maintain their independence. And all you're getting is, is hopefully, I said hopefully, $3,000 a month from Social Security, well, you, you, got, you got a problem. Uh, then you don't forget about your medicines, your pharmaceuticals, prescriptions. All of those things are not cheap. Uh, my wife used to have a little bottle of eye drops. And believe me, it was just about like that. And you, don't, you couldn't miss your eye. When you find out how much that little bottle cost, that little bottle cost $116 every time you get it. Believe me, if it costs that kind of money, you're going to put them eye drops in your eye. You ain't going to miss that eye either because uh, that's a lot of money. And it only lasts a few days and you got to have another one. And if your insurance company doesn't cover that, then that means you have to come up with that money out of your own uh, funds, which means something is going to go lacking because you are hard pressed just to uh, get your prescriptions filled. And believe me, they do not love you when you go down to the drugstore. It doesn't matter what the name is on the outside, they're all about that dollar. 
And uh, when that clerk or that agent behind that counter puts your prescription together, and uh, believe me, they don't mind telling you how much it is, and uh, you got to come up with it. And you, you, can, you can't put it on your credit card if you ain't got no money on the credit card or your EBT card or, 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 or paying cash and all of this type of thing. And so uh, what the scripture says, that righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people, is playing out uh, in our culture. Thank you, five minutes. Uh, in the way that we uh, of our housing uh, and our our health and our uh, education, uh, talking about education, all right. Uh, Ron DeSantis, I think they banned over a hundred books. Why that little lady that uh, did the poem at uh, President Biden's inauguration, her book. <laughs> A book of poetry has been banned. Can you imagine that, little sister Gorman? And uh, so you can see where this is heading. If he becomes president, my Jesus, what's going to happen? Huh? If he's doing that down in Florida, and uh, uh, they banned uh, Tony Morrison's book, all of her books. They banned Alice Walker's books. They banned James Baldwin's books. And these are some of the greatest writers and authors uh, that we have produced in this country. You hear me? And I'm just talking about the black ones that have been blackballed uh, and banned from being taught uh, in school. Not to mention the entire curriculum for the AP course that was going to be teaching black history. Now, there's no black history uh, taught anywhere in the state of Florida. And this DeSantis wants to bring this same policy, the same practice, the same educational reg regimen uh, to the entire nation as, the, as though we did not have enough problems already. And so uh, it's hard to tell which way things are going to go because most of us didn't think uh, Donald Trump would get elected. Of course, most of us didn't think George Walker Bush would get elected. But stranger things have happened in this country. And so uh, you and I are in for some rocky roads. And believe me, we, don't, we have few friends in Washington, uh, whether, whether they are Republican or Democrat. Because remember, it was the Re Democrats the Democratic Central Campaign Committee, who who told us that well, we can if we run against Donald Trump, we know we can beat him, and they ran against Donald Trump, but they didn't beat. Him. <laughs> and Donald Trump had had uh, was able to appoint all of these conservatives, retrograde uh, judges on the federal bench, not just talking about the Supreme Court, but all down the line on uh, the federal bench, uh, these judges are there for life. Life, mind you. And uh, we have the Democratic Party to thank for that, those kind of errors. And uh, they don't seem to be doing that well, taking on their feet with this debt ceiling uh, debate. They barely got uh, the debt ceiling done, and uh, the devil is always in the detail, and we know that uh, the student loan uh, are not are not going to be canceled, and uh, they want people to up to 54 years of age to go out and get a job. Well, you know this is a young man's world, young woman's world. And don't nobody want you uh, coming to work for them in your 50s? Hmm? If they didn't want you in, when you were young, gifted and black, they sure ain't gonna want you when you're old, uh, decrepit, and slow. And so you can just imagine what is in, in, store, in store for us uh, going forward. Better be, better be on your knees in prayer because the Lord 
is our shepherd and we shall not want, but the Lord is certainly going to have to come and help us overcome these uh, setbacks, setups, uh, objections, and hazards that the Republicans are tossing in our way. All right? Uh, the uh, Writers Guild is still out on strike. And as I conclude, I want to tell you, if you're working on a job and they don't want to pay you, you better take a word from the slave narratives, take a word from the average housewife. And if they don't, you're working on a job and they don't want to pay you, take my advice and don't work for them. Thank you, Doc. We're out of here.